okay so i suppose i'll start so i welcome you all to this uh, live interaction session for the subject engineering mechanics which is offered by professor k ramesh on the swayam portal so the idea behind the session is that i'll be solving some questions and uh, in the process of solving those questions if there are any doubts that are there i'll uh, try to clarify them so you can uh, stop me midway whenever you have a doubt and uh, you can ask you can either unmute and ask and if it uh, becomes overlapping too chaotic because of the because of more participants then you can always type it in the chat box if i am not able to give you the answer right away i'll keep a note of it and i'll try to answer it in the next uh, session so these sessions will be conducted weekly every friday uh, from 6 to 8 throughout the duration of this course which will be around 12 weeks so we are at the second week now week 1 was conducted last friday so yeah so are there any questions uh, other than this that you want me to discuss or if not i can proceed with uh, okay anyway so i'll get started so in the meantime if you have any questions you please feel free to ask so week 2 deals with equilibrium and a bit of trusses but before that i just wanted to discuss one point about resolution of a force into an equivalent force and a couple so let us try to understand this let us consider a rigid body here i consider a rigid body and this is my or rather let me put it here there is a force f that is acting on this body at this point let us say and if we want to calculate uh, let this point be called some uh, let us call it o so now the idea is that we need to calculate uh, resolve this force system about o resolve meaning it should have the same external effects so we saw from principle of transmissibility if i just make a copy of this from principle of transmissibility we know that if a force is over here and i just move it along its line of action the external effect is it is having is the same uh don't consider this force this i have just kept it as a stock so we are dealing with a system which has a force f applied and we have some point o which is a point of interest now from principle of transmissibility we know that these two systems are equivalent why because force is a sliding vector so we have just slided that force along its line of action and it has created no external change external effect change now suppose we want to represent the same system but the constraint is that it should be about point o then what happens this is along line of action now the constraint is that i need to represent everything with respect to o in that case i can no longer be in the line of action because uh, so this is my line of action and now i say that i want to represent the force here with whatever effect that comes in so that the external effect still remains the same so how do i go about doing that so let us say that this is my force <clears throat> now by transmissibility i move this force to this point what is that point let this point be such that this is perpendicular so far so good now these the first and these two systems are equivalent still because i have just moved it along its line of action 
now what i do is i'll just remove this and i have this force here let me just draw that force again so i had applied the force here so in addition to this force system what i'll do is i'll apply a force system that is like this and which is its negative exact negative so we know that if there are two forces that are collinear its resultant would be zero if they are of the equal magnitude which is what is happening here so essentially by that argument by addition of these two force forces uh, which are reciprocal of each other is not having any other effect to the system so this is still equivalent i suppose we have an agreement there now what would happen is if i again look at this now the idea is i should have some force system which is equivalent to this let me discuss what happens here now in this force system this force that we have here this force and this force these are separated by a distance let us say d and we know that this is also f so when two forces are equal in magnitude opposite in nature and separated by a distance d it essentially le leads to the formation of a couple so this will give out a couple of magnitude fd so in such a case i can erase this force and i can erase this force and i can apply a couple which is of magnitude fd so this is the essence of resolving a force into a force and a couple system where this will come in handy this will come in handy when we are dealing with bending moment diagrams where we need to uh, shift forces reactions quickly there this will be helpful yes please yeah mr sonu please go ahead uh yeah you've raised your hand i can see you please go ahead and ask your question okay i think there is some issue with his mic or either he just pressed it by mistake he or she uh are, are there any questions in what we discussed essentially what we are trying to do when the resolution of a, when a force is moved along its line of action it leads to the same external effect by principle of transmissibility now we want to learn how to actually shift a force from one point to the other in a rigid body and still have the same external effects that is done this step is an intermediate step which is not often discussed but uh, we will directly jump from the first on the left to the third on the right but uh, how we essentially do is we add a force and subtract a force which is still the same and uh, the opposite force and the applied force actually causes a couple so we have successfully shifted the force into a force and a couple system so is that clear are there any questions if there are any questions you please feel free to unmute and ask okay so i take it that this is clear in addition to this there is uh, there is some aspect about equilibrium that i wanted to discuss equilibrium conditions state that summation of all the external forces vector 
vector sum equaling 0 and summation of all moments external is 0. These are the equilibrium conditions. Now let us try to understand something about this, when these are applicable, when these are sufficient and necessary. So let us say that we have one aluminum piece, as you can see here on the screen uh, where I am holding it. So it has two holes. This is made of aluminum. For the purpose of this course, I will take this to be a rigid object. So let me apply two equal force, forces to pull it. Let us say that I am applying some force F, which is axially applied at both ends, both of its ends. I am holding it and applying it and I am trying to pull it. So if the forces are equal, we are able to see that this object is in equilibrium. It is not moving. It is not translating or it is not rotating. I am just applying it and it is holding as such. This is observation number one. Now, if I repeat the same uh, uh, experiment with a rubber band, let us say I have just held it by the ends and I am applying equal force on both the ends. Now, we are able to see that the points of application of the forces are moving away from each other. So, this tells us something quite important. Now, in the first case, we had a bar. Uh, uh, an aluminium piece and we applied two forces, call it F. We externally applied those forces. So what is the vector sum of these forces in this case? Let us call, let us call this the y axis, this is the x direction, this is the y direction and let uh, z be out of the plane of the paper. So sigma F vector equation can be written as three scalar equations sigma fx equal to zero sigma fy equal to zero sigma fz equal to zero since we are dealing only with the xy plane sim, uh, let me also write this summation of moments summation of moment vector implies summation of m about x about the x axis equaling 0, summation of moment about the y axis equaling 0 and summation of moment about the z axis equaling 0. So we have these three conditions. Essentially, these two are vector equations and in three dimensional space, vectors can be represented by three bases x, y and z or r, theta, z, whichever coordinate system that we take. In such a case, these vector equations can be decomposed into three scalar equations each. So equilibrium equation will essentially give me six conditions, which are scalars. We can simply be added. Now, when we are dealing with this example, when we are dealing with this example, this is essentially in the xy plane. So this condition, this condition is not required it is naturally satisfied because we are dealing only with the xy plane and sigma moment about x sigma moment about y will not appear here why because all these are out of plane actions so essentially in the 2d plane our equilibrium equations are sigma fx equal to 0 sigma fy equal to 0 and sigma mz equal to 0 which implies here z implies about z axis Now, there will be instances as it is discussed in the lectures also where we might write sigma m a equal to 0. That doesn't mean that this moment is about the a axis. It implies a point. If strictly speaking, how we should have written this? That we are adding summation of moments up, taken about the z axis at point a equaling 0. But this will be true trouble, too troublesome. So we just uh, take the general convention when we are talking about planes, we will confine our attention to one of the moment components alone. We will drop that subscript and the subscript that will be indicated in the context of the problem will only pertain to the point about which we are taking the moment. So I hope that that is clear. If that be the case, now that we have seen this example, we saw two examples, one of an aluminum 
bar, uh, aluminium link and one of a rubber band. So now we know, let us take this to be the xy plane and we have three equilibrium equations. So if I write sigma fx equaling 0, what does that give me? I have one force here plus f and I have another force here which is pointing in the negative x direction minus f equaling 0. We saw that there was no acceleration because the essentially the link was in its place. So there was no acceleration of the body as such. So this is satisfied. Sigma fx is satisfied. Sigma fy and uh, sigma mz, these things are trivially satisfied because we have anyway not applied anything. Trivially satisfied meaning left side also is 0. Since we have not applied anything, these equations do not make any difference anyway. So, in the case, in this case, we say that sigma, the equilibrium condition sigma f external vector equaling 0 and sigma m external the vector equaling 0 is satisfied. This is satisfied as we have seen now. And we also saw that the link is indeed at rest. It is not moving. It did not have any acceleration, which implies that these conditions, these conditions are necessary as well as sufficient to conclude that the body is in equilibrium provided that body is rigid. That is the implication here. The same example, if we were to consider the example of a rubber band, where we took this, I will just copy this, I will delete this. So, we had a rubber band like that and we had applied force to that end. This was how we had uh, actually, here we had applied, uh, held the rubber band and we pulled it. Sigma fx equal to 0, sigma f external is still 0. But was it in equilibrium, we could see that the point of application of the forces were moving away from each other. What that implies is, this is a deformable body. So, simply sigma f external equaling 0 is it is anyway necessary to conclude whether it is in equilibrium or not, but it is not sufficient because it is a deformable body. So, for deformable bodies, this condition, these conditions, equilibrium conditions should be satisfied for every conceivable subsystem, which is where in courses like strength of material, we will probe deeper into subsystems and we will find that equilibrium equations will come out in the form of differential equations. But that is all towards the next part of the course. For the current course, we deal with rigid objects and interconnection of rigid objects, that is interconnected rigid bodies. If I have one link and if I have two more links and connect all these three by a pin forming a triangle, that becomes a truss. So, a truss is essentially a connection of interconnected rigid bodies. Uh, an assembly of interconnected rigid bodies. So, we will be dealing with such systems in this course. So, for the purpose of this course, sigma f external equaling 0 and sigma m external equaling 0 is necessary as well as sufficient because we are dealing with rigid bodies. So, are there any questions about what we discussed? I thought that this preface is essential to us going into solving the problems next. Because otherwise, it will just be a mechanical exercise. I draw the free body diagram, I start solving for forces. But it is essential how we are doing it, what is the principle behind it. I thought it would uh, be good if I could brief, uh, give a brief about that. In that respect, if there are any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, I will move to the questions and we will see the application of what we have discussed right now. Yes, Mr. Shriyam Kumar, please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. For a single particle, uh, you have to see essentially this is a 
question that has been asked in the current assignment so i might not be able to give you the correct answer right away that is uh, the dictum is that we are not supposed to discuss the current assignment by let me give you a work around to think about so right now uh, we saw uh, yeah you can mute i'll just try to answer and then you can perhaps get back with your questions so we saw this link this link is essentially an assembly of particles which are held rigidly in the case of deformable bodies these are these won't be held rigidly but they would rather have some uh, they could have a movement in between them so for a particle sigma f external let us say i have a particle like this and i have a force f1 applied like that f2 applied like that and some fr applied like that such that or rather let me uh, let me make this generic let us say that there is a third force applied like that this is fr such that fr equals f1 plus f2 so essentially if we see this satisfies the equilibrium condition now what are the equilibrium conditions that we have discussed sigma f external equal to 0 and sigma m external equal to 0 moment how is moment vector defined it is r cross f meaning if there is a body if i have one point some reference point o and if i have a force where uh, which is applied at point a then moment about o is defined as r a with respect to o cross f this is by definition so r a with respect to o will be that vector let me put it in some different color so this will be give me the moment vector about o with this background what will happen when o and a come close to each other and in the limiting condition become the same so with this background you can see what will happen to a point okay so i hope that that uh, that is clarified yeah so for the rubber band sigma f external not equal to 0 since there is movement or will there will it be zero for the rubber band i pulled on the both ends i applied f now you have to take my word or we can do a very uh, uh, careful experiment where we have measured both the forces applied let us say that both are f one is pointing to the positive x axis another is pointing to the negative x axis now by principle of transmissibility can i shift it here without changing the external effects i can i can also shift it here meaning i have one force like that and i have another force which is along the same line this is along the same line like that how do we add vectors i have when i have two vectors like that i essentially place the tail of one to the tip of the other and i connect this tail to that tip this is how we do vector addition now let me take this and connect it like that i have put its tip to the its tail to the tip of the other where have we landed we have come back to the same point where we started with so what is the sum total of the force it is zero so the externally applied force vector adds up to zero so sigma f external is zero but still it is not in equilibrium what does that tell us that sigma f x the sigma f external equaling zero is not sufficient to conclude that it is in equilibrium it is only sufficient when we know there is no internal movement when will we know that by definition of a rigid body in case of a rigid body distance between two points doesn't change under the action of 
applied loads under the extra uh, under the action of an external stimulus the distance between two points in a body if it doesn't change we brand it as rigid it's an abstraction all bodies are deformable even the aluminium piece that i took is deformable for for the purpose of this discussion uh, or for this course rather we consider that to be rigid because the movement is very small is it clear miss priyanka okay good so you please uh, raise if you have questions like these you please do raise because otherwise it will be a very dry just problem solving session so let us have uh, make it as interactive as possible okay so with this let us move to the first question of the day a horizontal beam ab now whatever we discussed all these we will be applying here we will see the application part now a horizontal beam ab a b is supported by a hinge at a and a smooth roller at b and is loaded as shown and we have been asked to calculate the magnitudes of the reactions now before that i just uh, want to give another brief about how this symbolism works so if i have let us say so this is essentially a symbol that represents a hinged joint so there as we saw there is a pin this pin will be aligned with this hole and then we will be putting a pin inside it so as to constrain its motion we know that that pin can arrest its translation we are currently looking at the xy plane or rather we are currently looking at two dimensional motion two dimension need not be necessarily xy it can be yz or xz anything but for convenience we are taking it to be xy so in the xy plane it uh, let us say that i have a member like that which has a hole and the other end i am not showing so essentially what we will be doing is we will bring this member here and put a pin through that hole to arrest its motion so this will essentially arrest two motions it will not allow it to translate in the x direction or the y direction which means it has to apply some equal load to prevent that motion hence this gives arrests translation okay yeah i'll use hindi also first let me explain it in english and then i'll come to hindi ओके सो ये ऐसा भी हो सकता है कि ये ऐसा ट्रायंगल हो वो जैसा भी शेप हो उससे हमें मतलब नहीं है जब तक ये ऐसे दिखाया हुआ है दिस इज अंज जॉइंट ओके दिस विल हैव दिस विल अरेस्ट ट्रांसलेशन एंड इट विल अलाउ रोटेशन बिकॉज वी सी वंस वी पुट दैट पिन वी कैन rotate that uh, link in any angle only thing is we cannot move it it is in a sense translation is arrested rotation is not arrested so this will give me two unknowns two reactions rather i should say this will give me two reactions namely fx or rather if i name this as a we can follow one convention so we can call the x direction reaction as ax and ay similar to this there will be a representation which will have rollers what this does is it could be either this or it could just represent be represented like that this will be touching 
represented like that. All these only say that this RS the vertical. Vertical translation. Will it allow rotation? Yes, it will allow rotation. There is nothing to stop it. And the third type we have is it will arrest everything. That is, it will not allow it to translate or rotate. So, जैसे आप मान लीजिए, let us say that uh, you have a wall. Okay, this is a wall. Uh, one minute. And then I have a beam like that. What I do is I make a hole in the wall and I just embed it like that inside it. So this is embedded inside. Okay, and this is a wall. So what will this do? This will not allow it to rotate or translate. So this will essentially arrest everything. This will arrest translation as well as rotation. Uh, I have just briefly given this introduction, but it has been explained very well with proper animations in the lecture. So you can just revisit it. But for the sake of solving the next problem, for completeness sake, I just uh, thought I'll just brief you about this. OK, so we have been given this system. So what is the first step towards solving this? We will take this and draw its free body diagram. Let me paste the beam here. I have the beam like that. Consider that this I have removed. So what now it is in the air. But once I have removed, I should replace it with appropriate force interactions in order to for me to draw the free body diagram. Diagram. So let me replace this. This will give me one force like that and one force like that. So if this joint is A, let us call this AY, let us call this AX and let us have a convention that this is X, this direction is X, this direction is Y. Is the free body diagram complete? We also have to see what happened at the roller end. So at this end, we have isolated it. So we must replace it by one vertical reaction. We'll call this by. So now the free body diagram of the beam is complete. Are there any questions at this point? Yeah, Hindi, I'll, I'll try to mix it. Uh, we have beam ko isolate the beam support. And we have seen here that support, which type of support, which representation we give the reaction. So, we have seen here that we have a hinge on A, so we have removed a hinge on A. Because it is point A, so we have given the AX and AY because we are talking about it in the XY plane. Mein let us say. And B pe humne roller ko hata diya. Roller vertical reaction deta hai. Toh humne wo reaction laga diya. Toh free body diagram abhi complete ho gaya hai. So are there any questions? I hope that this is clear. Next, why are we doing all this essentially? What is the point of checking for equilibrium of bodies? The big picture is that we want to find unknown reactions. Ye sab unknown hai. See, we have applied these loads to this beam. We have pinned it at one end and we have provided a roller at other end. This roller will be supported on something, right? So we should know what that force is. We should know what are these forces in order for us to design appropriate supports. 
that is why we are doing this activity then the next thing after designing the supports would be how to design this very beam can this actually sustain these loads that will come in the next course on strength of material where we will be actually analyzing the beam what kind of stresses are getting developed inside the beam that will be taken up in strength of material but rudiments of that for example how to draw the shear force diagram all these will be discussed in week 4 of this very course but the primary objective here is to idealize this as a rigid body and to find out what are the reaction forces that are being applied that is why this entire discussion about equilibrium and everything came about so we have essentially we are in the xy plane we discussed here that in the xy plane we have these three equilibrium equations let me copy it and put it here we have these three equilibrium equations in the xy plane x and y we know we have drawn the free body diagram we have can uh, we have replaced the reactions uh, we have replaced the supports by appropriate reactions as we know another thing to notice all the forces if you notice by beta ay is pointing in the positive y direction ax is pointing in the positive x direction will it always be like that it is not necessary that it is always in the positive direction it can be in the negative direction also but when we draw the free body diagram as a convention we will take it to be positive we will start with the assumption that it is positive if our answer comes out to be a negative value that implies that whatever direction we assumed is incorrect we need to reverse the direction that is all okay so let us apply the equilibrium conditions now sigma fx equal to 0 what all equation how we know this is zero any answers to this how do we know that the acceleration is zero how do we know the lhs is the rhs is zero it need not be the case is that we are trying to analyze beams in statics right now the inherent assumption with equilibrium is that all objects that we are analyzing as of now are at rest that is the first starting point with which we are going and analyzing equilibrium then calculating the reactions and all other things that is why it is taken to be zero when we move to dynamics we will be seeing that it need not be zero what happens when it is not zero all those things we will see later but as the starting step we will first deal with statics where objects are at rest so the beam is at rest so sigma fx equal 0 what are fx components of forces one is ax this 50x will have a x component because of because it is inclined it is applied as an inclined load 10x 10 kN will it have a horizontal component no because it is applied in the y plane similarly 20 kN will have an x component because it is again inclined dy is vertical so it need not play, it won't play any role here so let us add them up ax plus can we resolve this as 50 cos 35 and this will be minus 20 sin 70 we have accounted for all the forces and this equals 0 so what is ax from here it is 20 sin 70 minus 50 cos yes yeah good thanks for catching that i appreciate that so this will be cos 70 is equal to 0 so what does ax come out to be here 20 cos 70 minus 50 cos 35 
it comes out to be minus 30. Yes, uh, Rohit, what is the question? Yes, please go ahead. Rohit Paul, you have a question. Well, if you do, please do raise it. Okay, so uh, now we notice that we have got AX as negative. What does that imply? That imply that our uh, assumed direction needs to be flipped. So essentially, AX would be acting in the opposite direction, in the direction of minus X. That is what it means. So we can see that our convention, general convention of assuming things to be positive and then only making the change once we find out that we are getting a negative result. It works. This is what we will be following throughout this course. Even when we go to dynamics, we will assume the uh, acceleration vector or the angular velocity vector, angular acceleration vector to be positive. Once our answer comes out to be negative, we know that uh, our direction needs to be flipped. If that not be the case, then no issues anyway. Okay, so let us move on to the next equilibrium condition. Uh, I can see that uh, Mr. Rohit Pal, your hand is raised. If you have a question, please unmute and ask. So this will be AY minus, we will have this component of 50, which is 50 sine, sine 35 minus now this will also play a component because this is in the y direction. So will this, so will this. So we can see that Fy has lot of terms. So Fy will have minus 50, minus 10 kilonewton, minus 20 sine 70 plus By because we have taken it to be pointing upwards equaling 0. Why? Because acceleration in the y direction is 0 because we are dealing with statics as of now. So what does this give us? Ay plus By equaling 50 sin 35 plus 10 plus 20 sin 70, whatever that is. So we have got this as equation 1. We have employed two conditions and we have got one answer clearly and the other we have got it as a relation between the two. So there are three equations that we have at our disposal. What are those? Sigma fx equal to 0, sigma fy equal to 0 and mz equaling 0, mz equaling 0. These are the three conditions and we can see that these we have only three unknowns. So they should be able to give us a unique answer. These are also called statically determinate problems. Determinate meaning you can determine the unknowns with the help of statics alone. You don't have to do anything further. But we will discuss all these terms when as we come about in uh, as we come across examples. Now the next is sigma mz equal to zero. Okay, now we. We discussed at length that this index z indicates that it is about the z axis. Since we are dealing with planar conditions, we take it that all moments are summed up about the z axis. So we will essentially drop this z. So we just say sigma moment is 0. Now this begs an interesting question. Force we have summed up. Moment at which point should we sum up? or rather I should say about which point. Sigma m, yes, exactly. About which point is the question. Yeah, uh, Ms. Priyanka got it right. So it is essentially that you can take any point in space 
it should the selection of a point is observer dependent and physics is not dependent on the observer so essentially it should add up any point we take at times we will take it at a point where there are more number of unknowns why because m is r cross f so if there are more number of unknowns and we take moment about that very point where those unknowns are applied r goes to zero so their moment contribution goes to zero so we will be easily able to eliminate those things but other than that if it is a statically determinate problem taking moment about any point should be you should be able to get unique uh, answers for your unknowns if it is statically indeterminate problem you will get independent equations instead of direct unknowns for which you might need one or two more uh, 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 independent equations to solve i hope that that is clear about any point that's good and this point need not be uh, confined to the object alone i can take any other point also i i may as well take a point here in space and some of the moments and it will come to zero but it will be cumbersome why because i have to calculate uh, i have to calculate these vectors for r cross f so that is why we don't do it but in principle it can it will hold about any point i hope that that is clear okay so let us take it about two points and try to solve it let us try to uh, take the moment about b first actually this point is b so let us take moments about b equaling 0 let us write that now we are in the right handed coordinate system this is x this is y now x cross y is going to give me positive z what this implies is all anti clockwise moments are positive and all clockwise moments are negative because these are along the negative z direction and these are along the positive z direction is it clear i hope this is clear if it is not clear please uh, raise it raise your question in the meantime i'll move on so let me copy this put it here and i'll remove all this now let me calculate moment about b equaling 0 let me write that ax we can see this ax this arrow ax is a force vector actually it came out to be negative but that's fine by using principle of transmissibility i can straight away take it to b so it passes through that point b so essentially it will have no contribution towards b ay as we saw ay now we have to shift it to b and we will have a equivalent couple which is what we are trying to find out what that equivalent couple is so just for one case i'll write the position vector and do it let this be b this is my position vector essentially for a so r b r a with respect to b is what is the total length of the beam in the question it is given to be 10 meters so r b with a with respect to b is minus 10 i cap in the negative x direction and force applied at a which is essentially ay or rather let me take it to be ax i cap plus ay j cap i am just doing this elaborately uh, about how we understood moments so that uh, you can see it in work once and then we will try to do it simply i hope that you can bear with me it will uh, it will be helpful in the long run this is my force 
and this is my position vector so moment contribution due to this will be r a by b cross f at a which is nothing but minus 10 i cap crossed with a x let us keep it to be a x as of now we will substitute the values towards the end and a y j cap now we know i cross i is 0 i cross j is k this will give me minus 10 a y k cap So I hope uh, this example is clear. Essentially what it says, we have moved this force here. It will be accompanied with one moment also. As we saw initially, how when we move one force to some other point, we have to add one couple. That couple will be 10 Ay. 10 is D. From that example, it is D. And Ay is the actual force. I hope this is clear. Uh, you please ask your questions if you have any. I'm just trying to elaborately show this for one case so that it becomes clear and then we will do it quickly. So this is just one case I'm trying to show. This is contribution of reaction at A to moment taken about B. Similarly, we can do it for all the other forces. Now we will not be elaborately writing position vectors. We will quickly do it. So let us do that quickly. We take this again. Moment about B equal to 0. Let us write. So it will be minus Ay into 10. Because 10 is the entire length. What is this distance given to be? It is given to be. 6, 5 and 3. So this is 6. This is 6 meters. This is 5 meters. And then this is 3 meters. So it will be minus Ay into 10 plus 50 sin 35 into 6 plus 10 into 5 plus 20 sin 70 into 3 plus 20 sin 70 into 3 and that's all. plus by into 0. That is all that there is applied. So all the y, com y component forces, forces along the y direction only contribute to this moment. Along the x, they don't contribute because i cross i is 0 as we saw earlier. So this I may as well not write, but I have written it anyway. So from here, can we calculate what Ay is? Anyone? Yeah, just a moment. I'm also calculating. Good that you have an answer. Let me just check. Fifty sine thirty-five into six plus ten into five plus twenty sine seventy into three. So a y comes out to be. Yeah, exactly. 
eight five kilo newton. So some of this might look very fundamental, but uh, it is important that we build it step by step. So in case somebody feels that I'm going too slow or going in unwanted details, you please let me know. I'll try to speed it up. Also, let me know if it is the other way around. If I'm too going too fast, I'll try to slow it down. So a y we have got a x we had got. What is left? B y we don't have B y yet, but we do have this equation one. Let me copy this and put it here. We have one equation saying a y and B y. Satisfies this equation because the body satisfy equilibrium equations because it is in equilibrium and it is a rigid body. So if we substitute this in the place of a y, we'll be able to calculate b y. So what does b y come out to be? Fifty sine thirty five plus ten plus twenty sine seventy minus this. So, anyone, any answers? Six two, twenty nine point six two kilonewton. Okay. So we have actually solved for the unknowns in this problem. What were the unknowns? We we took a beam simply. we put a hinge at a we connected it with a hinge at a and just rested it on a roller at b a smooth roller mind you if it is not smooth there would be some horizontal reaction uh, because of friction so that is why this has been qualified as smooth so that we need not worry about the friction part so uh, under the action of these loaded uh, these loads it is uh, given that uh, this beam holds uh, that is it is in place it is not moving it is at rest so by invoking the principle of statics find out all the unknowns so what were the unknowns ax ay bx by B, bx by definition is zero because it's a roller support and it is a smooth roller ax ay and by we have calculated as given in this solution so i take it that this is clear if there is something not clear please feel free to ask and if uh, the pace at which i'm going is uh, either too slow or too fast you please let me know so that i can uh, you know take corrective action i hope that this is clear so these i am not filling these up you can fill this up let us move to the next question two spheres of radii 5 mm 5 uh, meter and 7 meter weighing this much respectively are encased in a hollow box resting on the ground as shown so 5 meters is quite huge and for that this weight is quite less so you can understand from the very question that it is an academic question uh, it doesn't pertain to any real life situation because uh, it, this would have to be made of a very light material to have this weight and that those dimensions but nonetheless we'll try to solve it neglecting frictional effects answer all your questions so we have two spheres so the section which is shown is taken through the center of those spheres through the mid plane of those spheres and i have another sphere like this okay so if i were to draw the free body diagram of this i have isolated this system of spheres let me move this sphere here correctly okay close enough so i have two spheres i have isolated those two spheres so what will be the force interactions that i need to apply this is the center this is another center so i have one force 
like that at point c let me call this fc that is applied by the box on the sphere similarly i will have one force fd applied let me call this sphere 1 and sphere 2 1 2 fd will get applied sir please yes okay that is not now all right and then at e i have another force like that which is we can call it ey as we called a reaction and to be consistent with the sign convention that we are using let me call that fe so the idea is one should not be uh, one should not be getting confused with conventions no matter how we call a force it still remains the same it is just for our convenience that we name it however we want and try to solve for it so this is one system then i have i'll have the box like that the box would be like that this is the free body diagram of the box f e and here we will have f d now why did i flip the forces there because of newton's third law so when a body is applying one force on the other when we draw the free body diagram of the other one we will flip the force now it is quite possible that uh, the force which we have assumed on one of the bodies is actually opposite in nature it will automatically get flipped in the second body so we need not worry about that one thing is that we should just respect newton's third law invariably now let us look at the questions so they have asked which of the following depicts the free body diagram of the smaller sphere alone that is what they have asked so we need not for the time being we need not this free body diagram is not complete is this complete anyone yeah this is not complete because if i do sigma f e a sigma f equaling 0 i will have motion in the y direction which has to be arrested yeah exactly exactly so ground ground reaction essentially it will be distributed in some manner but let me put it like that so this is the force from the ground now this free body diagram is complete this fg is actually the resultant of some complex variation of reaction but we are not getting into that right now for this question i need the free body diagram of these two so let me copy that put it here let me delete that now what we want is the free body diagram of the smaller sphere so what we have to do we have to separate these out we have to separate them out like that yeah i'll just get to that one minute so i have a force you draw a line like that okay connecting the centers i have drawn one line i will separate this out so i have two force interactions like that this we will call f 2 1 what does this mean f 2 1 on on sphere 2 by sphere 1 with that convention we will call this so what will this be this will be f 1 2 
and by Newton's third law F21 is minus F12. Yeah, okay. So there is another aspect to it that we have not accounted for because generally in mechanical and aerospace engineering, we tend to overlook the weight of the object because those are uh, not much compared to the uh, other applied loads, but it is not so in civil structures as it is discussed in the lecture also. So here we have to put the weight of this. Similarly, we have to put the weight of this. Essentially, this will be smaller. Okay, so now it is complete. I hope that uh, that is clear. So we have the weight here. And we have another weight here. So yeah, as uh, somebody had remarked, if we draw the free body diagram at A uh, of uh, sphere 1, we are able to see that uh, this has three forces, weight, the force applied from the larger sphere and the reaction. This doesn't account for the contact between the two spheres. This doesn't account for the weight. This doesn't account for the contact between the box and the sphere. That is why option A is correct. Yeah, so I'll, uh, uh, in case you want me to explain it in Hindi, you please uh, remark at that point, you stop me and say because uh, then I, I'll be able to gauge when to switch to Hindi. Do you want me to explain this in Hindi also right now? Okay, so we have in those spheres. Ko liya. इसका फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम बनाया अब इस फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम में हमने वेट को अकाउंट कर दिया जो भी कांटेक्ट पॉइंट्स थे एंड से उनको अकाउंट कर दिया और हर एक कांटेक्ट पॉइंट को हमने नॉर्मल टू द सरफेस ऑफ कांटेक्ट लिया क्यों क्योंकि इन्होंने बोला फ्रिक्शन को इग्नोर करो इस वजह से हमने सब जगह पे नॉर्मल कांटेक्ट लिया मीनिंग अगर ये सीधा है तो इसके परपेंडिकुलरली हमने फोर्स डाला है अगर ये ऐसे है तो इसके परपेंडिकुलरली हमने फोर्स डाला है क्योंकि हमने फ्रिक्शन को कंसीडर नहीं किया है तो उस हिसाब से हमने स्फीयर वन और टू का फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम बनाया सिमिलरली वी हैव आल्सो ड्रॉन द सिमिलरली एक फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम ने बॉक्स का भी बना दिया फिर हमने क्वेश्चन को देखा तो क्वेश्चन में पूछ रहे हैं स्फीयर टू का फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम कौन सा है तो हमने वन और टू को सेपरेट किया जैसे ही सेपरेट करते हैं उन दोनों का इंडिविजुअली जब फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम लिखेंगे तो एक का इफेक्ट दूसरे पे लिखेंगे तो वही किया यहाँ पे भी और इसमें मैंने ये इन दोनों के सेंटर को इसलिए कनेक्ट किया था क्योंकि हमको फ्रिक्शन इग्नोर करना है हर जगह तो हमारा जो भी फोर्स होगा वो रेडियली होगा तो जो भी फोर्स जिस भी स्फीयर पे लगेगा वो हमेशा उसके सेंटर के थ्रू पास करेगा क्योंकि फ्रिक्शन नहीं है इस वजह से मैंने दोनों का सेंटर को कनेक्ट किया था तो हमने देखा कि ये जैसे पहला वाला फ्री बॉडी डायग्राम है ये इसमें वेट को भी अकाउंट पे लिया है दूसरे स्फीयर से जो फोर्स आ रहा है उसको भी अकाउंट में लिया है और बॉक्स के कांटेक्ट को भी अकाउंट पे लिया है तो इस वजह से ये सही है बाकी सब में कोई एक चीज को अकाउंट नहीं किया हुआ है इस वजह से दोज वर नॉट करेक्ट आई होप दैट दैट इज क्लियर है ना ओके तो दिस इज ऑप्शन नंबर वन फाइन नाउ वी हैव टू कैलकुलेट वॉट इज द मैग्निट्यूड ऑफ फोर्स एग्जेटेड बाई द स्मॉलर स्फियर ऑन टू द बिगर स्फीयर एट द कॉन्टैक्ट पॉइंट एफ तो ये पूछ क्या रहे हैं वॉट आर दे आस्किंग एसेंशियली दे आर आस्किंग एफ वन टू मैग्नेट्यूड दिस फोर्स इज द फोर्स दैट इज अप्लाइड बाई द स्मॉलर स्फीयर ऑन द बिगर स्फीयर एंड दिस इज वॉट दे आर ट्राइंग टू आस्क वॉट इज द मैग्नेट्यूड ऑफ दैट फोर्स then we have the normal reaction force at c normal reaction force at d and normal reaction force at e so those let us see how to calculate them so let me take this free body diagram now again from the big picture what have we done there is a system 
which has a box which has two spheres which are weighing this much which are of dimensions something that is what we have been told now what is it that we are trying to find out we are trying to find out what are all the force interaction in this configuration how much force is one sphere applying to the other how much is the box applying force to keep them in that configuration this is what we are trying to analyze using statics before we do that let us get one geometrical point out of the way this is a line connecting the sphere this is the line connecting the center of both the spheres okay forget this for the time being let me remove this let me draw a line like that and let me draw a perpendicular line like that these two meet here so let me remove this let me call this theta okay so do we know this distance it is given to be 5 meters yeah exactly so this is 5 meters and similarly this is 7 meters this is some x but the total is given to be 22 meters so can we calculate x from there x is 22 meters minus 5 minus 7 which is coming to 10 meters so this x is actually equal to 10 meters okay can we calculate are we in a position to calculate this distance the vertical distance we don't know what is this height so that will be hard to calculate instead if we can we calculate this distance from the hypotenuse because to calculate the angle theta we need at least two sides to use trigonometry one side we have got easily it is 10 meters the other side how is this line constructed it is constructed by joining the centers of both the spheres so essentially the length of the line would be summation of the radii exactly so it will be 12 meters so it is 5 plus 7 So it is 12 meters. I hope that is clear. In that case, I can see that cos theta from this is 10 by 12. Correct? So theta is what? 33.56. Excellent. Yeah, 33.56 degrees. So now that we have got this out of the way. now that we have theta now we can calculate this easily that distance now we can calculate uh, using uh, the one of the angles or using cosine rule however we can do that using pythagoras theorem okay but uh, it is not needed so i'll skip it as of now so this is 33.56 so far so good so let me go to the free body diagram here i have the smaller sphere to be drawn it i'll take this at this point there is a force like that and this angle is 33.56 degrees okay and this is this force is f21 applied by 1 on to 2 do we have the magnitude of this it is essentially the weight which is given to be 110 smaller sphere is 110 newtons so this is 110 fc is we don't know what fc is but one thing we do know for sure is that it passes through the center why because we have been told that we have to ignore friction so this is passing through the center 
this is also passing through the center i hope that is clear so in the plane all the forces are passing through the center what does that mean this is a concurrent force system so in a concurrent force system sigma m equaling 0 will not give you any benefit why because m is r cross f in concurrent force system everything will go to zero this we will see in more detail in the next week when we discuss trusses let us not confuse ourselves with that now uh, okay so let us write sigma fx equal zero this is x this is y what does this give us it will give us fc does the weight have a component in the x direction no because it's vertical it will be minus f21 cos 33.56 equaling 0 why 0 because we are dealing with statics similarly we can write fy equaling 0 So this will be FC doesn't have a Y component. We'll have minus 110 because it's applied in the negative Y direction plus F21 sine 33.56 equals 0. So from here we can calculate F21 is Hundred and ten, one ninety nine. Yeah. Yes, please go ahead. No problem, no problem. मैं बस ये ये एक मिनट कैलकुलेशन खत्म कर देता हूँ, फिर मैं आपको हिंदी में भी समझा दूँगा, ठीक है? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, no problem. So, yeah, at the 198.99, this is essentially 199 Newton. So, FC is F21 cos 33.56. So, FC is what? 165. 0.83 Newton. Thank you. वो जो मिस्टर सानी कुमार जो भी थे, आपको जब भी ऐसे कोई दिक्कत हो तो आप प्लीज मेरे को टोक दीजिए क्योंकि अब मैं प्राइमरली मैं इंग्लिश में कंडक्ट कर रहा हूँ, but बीच में मेरे को पता नहीं चलेगा कि कब हिंदी में स्विच करना है, तो जैसे आपने टोक के बोल दिया बीच में कि आप हिंदी में समझा दो, आप ऐसे बोल so I request Hanji. No, no, what he can up now a bit of a data dia my what I'm saying is up involved beats my bowl DJ was my quite good me absolutely no problem in fact I welcome it because the whole purpose of this session is to get the point the concept across it is it doesn't matter what language we are discussing in okay तो इसमें सबसे पहले देखिए इसमें हमको करना था कि आपको पहला वाला क्वेश्चन तो समझ में आ गया ये आ गया फ्री बॉडी उसका अब इसमें हमको ये कॉन्करेंट फोर्स सिस्टम है क्यों क्योंकि हमारे पास एक डिस्क है जिसमें यहाँ पे एक फोर्स लगा हुआ है यहाँ पे ऐसे एक फोर्स लगा हुआ है और उसका वेट है वेट तो उसके सेंटर से ही जाता है है ना तो अब इसको हमने मान लीजिए हमने हम इसको यहाँ पे ले गए Using principle of transmissibility, उसी तरह ये जो force लगाया था, उसको भी हमने उसके line of action के along ऐसे ले गए, तो actual force system ये है। This force system is concurrent, जो कि सारे force उसके center point पे मिल रहे हैं। अब जो कि क्योंकि ऐसा हो रहा है, इस वजह से इसका moment contribution कुछ होगा नहीं। इसमें आप sigma m about मान लीजिए center है, ठीक है? Sigma m about o equal to zero लिखते हो, तो क्या है? ये तो left side भी zero ही है। 
क्योंकि सब कुछ उसी पॉइंट पे लगा हुआ है इस वजह से दिस विल नॉट गिव यू एनी सिग्मा एम इक्वल टू जीरो विल नॉट बी बेनिफिशियल इसके अलावा हमारे पास क्या है सिग्मा एफ एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो है सिग्मा एफ वाई इक्वल टू जीरो है तो अब हमने उसको सिग्मा एफ एक्स इक्वल टू जीरो लगाया सिग्मा एफ वाई इक्वल टू जीरो लगाया तो उस हिसाब से हमने ये सॉल्व किया है इसमें कोई क्वेश्चन है आपको अगर क्लियर नहीं है तो आप पूछिएगा नहीं तो मैं अगला वाला पार्ट करता हूँ और उसमें भी देन आई विल ट्राई टू एक्सप्लेन दैट आल्सो इन हिंदी ओके या दिस इज अ कॉन्करम फोर्स सिस्टम एंड जस्ट सो आई एम क्लियर इन द लास्ट क्लास आई हैड मेंशन दैट आई एम कॉन्वर्जेंट इन हिंदी एज वेल एज तमिल सो इफ एनीबडी Uh, like someone had uh, asked if i could explain it in hindi if somebody wants to explain it in tamil i can do that as well so you please uh, uh, suit your convenience in that case now that we have this let us look at the next part let us look at this free body we take that here i let is this i have a force like that which passes through the center and this is f 1 2 which is nothing but f negative of f 2 1 by newton's third law now we have accounted for all the forces here let us apply equilibrium condition to this also why because this is also in equilibrium so was the first disc uh, so was the first sphere both together were also in equilibrium so ek in a system of interconnected rigid bodies if the system is in equilibrium that implies each and every sub system is also in equilibrium har ek sub system bhi equilibrium mein hoga is problem mein kya kya sub system hai ek bada wala sphere hai ek chhota wala sphere hai ek wo box hai jisme rakha hua hai teeno apne apne इंडिविजुअली इक्विलिब्रियम इक्वेशन को सैटिस्फाई करेंगे तभी पूरा सिस्टम इक्विलिब्रियम इक्वेशन को सैटिस्फाई करेगा इस वजह से हमने हर एक कंपोनेंट को लिया और अलग अलग उस पर सिग्मा एफ एक्स सिग्मा एफ वाई सिग्मा एम जी लगाने लग गए क्योंकि एवरी सब सिस्टम इज रेस्पेक्टिंग इक्विलिब्रियम तो जैसे इस पे आए तो हमको ये पता है कैसे है ना Now let me put this in a dotted line. I know this angle. What did? What was it? Thirty-three point five six. This I know. Okay. So again, because this is a concurrent force system, isme wo nahi hoga. Moment ka kuch mera aayega nahi, kyunki my principle of transmissibility ko use karke sab force ko agar main center pe laga deta hu. Jaise maine yahan pe lagaya hua hai. इस जगह पे जैसे मैंने लगाया हुआ है सब फोर्स को मैंने सेंटर पे लगा दिया अब मैं इसमें अगर सिग्मा एम अबाउट ओ लेता हूं तो किसी भी फोर्स का कोई कंट्रीब्यूशन है ही नहीं तो सिग्मा एम इक्वल टू जीरो क्या मेरे को बता रहा है ये मेरे को बता रहा है कि जीरो इक्वल टू जीरो तो ये तो ट्रिवियली सेटिस्फाई हो गया इससे मेरे को कुछ फायदा ही नहीं हुआ इस वजह से सिग्मा कॉन्करेंट फोर्स सिस्टम में मोमेंट इक्विलिब्रियम इक्वेशन कोई यूज नहीं होता है उसका force equilibrium equation only will give you the unknowns if it can provided it's a determinate problem okay so let us apply sigma fx equal to 0 so it will be f 1 2 cos 33.56 minus fd equals 0 kyun baki dono vertical load hain jinka koi contribution nahi hoga और ये जो फोर्स है ये क्वेश्चन में दिया हुआ है कुछ 250 दिया हुआ है ना तो वी विल पुट दैट एस टू फिफ्टी न्यूटन ये एक आ गया अब सिग्मा एफ वाई इक्वल टू जीरो अगर हम लिखते हैं ये क्या होगा इट विल बी माइनस एफ वन टू 
sin 33.56 minus 250 plus Fe equals 0. और सिग्मा m इक्वल टू जीरो तो कोई हमें बेनिफिट दे नहीं रहा है अब इस इक्वेशन में कितने अननोन है एफ वन टू एफ डी एफ ई वी हैव ओनली टू इक्वेशन बट वी हैव अपेरेंटली थ्री अननोन बट वी एक्चुअली नो वॉट एफ वन टू इज फ्रॉम न्यूटन थर्ड लॉ वी नो दैट एफ वन टू इज एसेंशियली माइनस एफ टू वन सो दैट इज नॉट अननोन F21 हमने अभी कैलकुलेट किया था 199 न्यूटन यहां पे तो इस वजह से हमको बस वो सब्सटीट्यूट करना है तो उस हिसाब से FD क्या आएगा FD होगा F12 वन टू कॉस थर्टी थ्री इज नथिंग बट माइनस एफ टू वन कॉस थर्टी ओके या इट्स समथिंग इंटरेस्टिंग हियर सी इफ वी सी दिस इक्वेशन एफ टू वन वी कैलकुलेटेड दिस फॉर वन ऑफ द फ्री बॉडीज एंड बाय इनवोकिंग दिस न्यूटन्स थर्ड लॉ वी हैव ऑलरेडी इनवोक दिस न्यूटन्स थर्ड लॉ बेस्ड ऑन विच हमने इसको फ्लिप करके लगाया है so we have already invoked that so we need not repeat it here i hope uh, that is clear is way se iska magnitude jo hoga 199 cos 33.56 hoga fd what does that come out to be pan 60 Yeah, exactly. One sixty-five point eight three newtons. Now uh, there is another way to look at this. See, F D we have got as one sixty-five. Okay, and F C also we got as one sixty-five. Why? Because, jo whatever we took initially, this system, this has to be in equilibrium. So if we take this system and apply F Y Sigma f x equal to zero. We'll be able to see that f c is equal to f d. So both are adding up. That is why that is another way to look at this, which is why this force and this have come out to be exactly same. So depending on the force system, depending on the unknowns that we want to find, we should choose the appropriate force system. that we will learn in over the course of time while solving problems we will learn how to uska main uh, example will be our method of sections which we will discuss next week jo uh, truss mein koi beech mein koi member hai uska force agar nikalna hai to aap method of joint use karke har ek joint pe solve nahi kar sakte hain it will be excruciatingly long if there are 1000 members then you cannot solve it 1000 uh, times so how to invoke a subsystem which will exactly give you the answer with the minimum computational effort is what we will see in method of sections similarly to have calculated fd we need not have done the sigma fx equal to 0 on this subsystem we could have rather taken the entire thing added the thing once we had sigma once we had fc from the global point of view fc is equal to fd because there is no horizontal acceleration by that uh, way also we could have arrived at this answer i take it that that is clear then what else we need fe fe is f12 sin 33.56 plus 250 what is this f12 is 199 comes out to be 360 you can check the calculations if you are getting something else please let me know i take it this is clear
यस हाँ जी हाँ बिल्कुल कर सकते हैं बिल्कुल कर सकते हैं यस एग्जैक्टली exactly we can use lamey's theorem which is nothing but the sign rule wo uh, thank you for bringing this up why don't i show that also see what uh, uh, mr mayur had remarked is this we can calculate this we can solve using our uh, lamey's theorem also lamey's theorem nothing but sign rule essentially in a triangle i have a triangle if i have a b c and if i have this angle as alpha beta and gamma so the sine rule sine rule says that a by sin beta equal to b by sin gamma equal to c by sin alpha that is the side uh, by the sin of its opposite angle this ratio will always be maintained is what the sign rule says the ames theorem is just a uh, you know a variation of that because if we take this four system sorry we take this four system if i name this alpha theta and let me name this gamma if i name this to be f1 f2 and f3 so from lamey's theorem i'll have f3 by sin alpha is f2 by sin gamma equal to f1 by sin beta now we know one of the angle is 33 rest of the others you can calculate by simple uh, complementary supplementary angles and then substitute here once we know one of the unknowns simply we can do this so excellent point uh, mr mayur so the thing is that there is no one way to solve a problem it is just uh, whatever concepts you have observed you try to apply each and one of them uh, if they are applicable and then uh, verify it for yourself once you verify it for a number of problems you will get the confidence that what you are doing is right and you know it will save your time in the long run so okay good anything else any other points any other questions about what we saw see initially i digressed a bit by giving uh, an explanation about uh, equilibrium and why we are uh, having equilibrium for rigid objects what are the conditions and all this because uh, at least one should know the background before applying this so that was the intention with which it was given and it has been uh, thoroughly covered in the lectures as well so i take it that that is clear so these are the questions uh, uh, the questions which we have solved and i'm not populating the answers here so we can populate it later uh, this is one of the questions which is much similar to that i'll just give you a brief i won't solve this here i'll move on to the other questions that are uh, more interesting now so we have two cylinders or uh, rather logs that are like that and then uh, these are perfectly circular is what is given the out of plane length is given to be 3 meters exactly rho is given for the wood given to be 7.75 kg per meter cube is what is given a line drawn perpendicular from the center of the log this is the plane bc this is the plane bc and it says a line drawn perpendicular from the line exactly meets the center of the log and this distance is 1 by root pi so essentially radius of the log is 1 by root pi what is unknown what is the difference between the previous problem and this problem is that the mass density is given so you need to calculate the weight based on the volume 
so weight will be like that for this and weight will be same for both because essentially uh, both are of identical dimensions then we connect these two lines we have the force interaction like that there will be one force like this there will be one force like this there will be one force like this at c other things you can just separate them out and uh, ca calculate the forces using the equilibrium condition so i won't delve into this question much i suppose this was solved previously also so i take it uh, you can just try it out as an exercise so i will move on to the next part on uh, trusses so bracings used to arrest wind effects or sway effects in a truss is generally subjected to what tension compression bending or the combined effect of these three so for this we should understand what exactly is a truss a truss is an axial member truss is an assembly of axial members what does axial member mean let us say that the same link that i took initially today to show that uh, that it's a rigid body okay and i have a link like that so this is a member which can take only axial force so this is essentially a two force member two force member is also known as an axial member iska matlab ye hai ki ya to fir ye tension le sakta hai ya fir compression ye bending nahi le sakta hai idealize hum aise hi karte hain aisa nahi hai ki aap isko agar pakad ke isko ghumayenge to ye bending nahi le payega then the thing is if you do that it will no longer be a two force member you cannot idealize that as a truss member that is all so we will take this member we will put it in an assembly such that it takes only axial forces such an assembly is called a truss why do we need a truss because we need to make structures that have to withstand loads and truss provides an efficient way to do that truss essentially uh, uses the section optimally why that is that we will see when we get to trusses in detail next week but uh, for now you can take it that it is an efficient arrangement so what we do first we will take this member we have a ground let us say that it has a hinge so first we will take this and put it like that next let me connect it like that the second member next let me have a member that goes through this and connects it with the third member something like that something like that and if i provide a roller support here so this becomes a simple truss why because if i apply a load here if i apply a load onto this it is able to withstand that load it will not move because this member this member and this member cannot rotate relative to each other because it is locked in that position so that is what makes a truss uh, essentially a load bearing assembly and all these members are subjected
these members are subjected either to tension tension or compression in some instances we will find that there is an assembly where the force is one member is coming out to be zero so those are called zero force members it doesn't mean that if it doesn't take any load it is useless because essentially when we solve a truss problem academically we solve only for one of the given load combinations where load is applied at some point it is not necessary that load will be applied always at that point if the load application point changes or the load magnitude uh, uh, or there are multiple loads that are getting applied then it is quite possible that whatever you got a zero force member in one of the configurations will carry some load in the other so zero force member doesn't mean that it is useless so please keep that no uh, that point in mind okay so there is something peculiar about tension and compression if i take a member and i pull it theek hai maan lijiye humne ek truss member liya aur usko hum pull kar rahe hain tension mein hai wo तो खाली उसका क्रॉस सेक्शन किसी भी जगह पे अगर मैं इसका क्रॉस सेक्शन काटता हूं जैसे मान लीजिए इसको मैंने लिया यहां पे सेक्शन काटा और इसको हटा दिया और यहां पे इसका एक स्ट्रेस वेरिएशन आएगा जो भी आएगा द द थिंग अबाउट टेंशन इज वंस यू पुल इट इट डज नॉट डिपेंड ऑन एनीथिंग एल्स एक्सेप्ट फॉर द क्रॉस सेक्शनल एरिया tension member only deals with cross sectional area but if i have a buck, but if i have a compression member okay if i have a compression member then this length also becomes a problem kyunki compression member mein if you have a long very long length then it will lead to problems with stability it will become unstable at times so this compression member depends on cross sectional area is one thing it surely depends on the cross sectional area in addition to that it also depends on the length so it is not reliable if there is a truss and the length is too long to be connected for taking sway forces or wind forces then i need to also account for the length so it becomes problematic for me that is why we consider to arrest the effects wind and sway effects we always go for members that are in tension not in compression is it clear are there any questions okay it is clear fine okay so let us look at this problem which of the following is true about this condition before this we need to discuss one thing about determinacy and indeterminacy for that we have one condition that m plus r equal to 2j if it satisfies it is essentially a determinate truss but uh, we need to understand why that is what is why we count m and r what is that has to do with this so essentially what we are trying to do is let me draw let me take this truss and draw its free body diagram there is a force that is applied like that and at both ends i am able to see that it is hinged at both the ends so what would that give me 
will give me two reactions at every end. It should not be confused with the applied load. That applied load is vertical, then why at all horizontal reactions will come? It is representative. It may it, it is quite possible that uh, it may have some other load configuration. It could have a load like that. In such a case, uh, it should not be that your calculation of determinate and indeterminate trusses should vary from problem to problem. That is the entire point. Okay. So this has four unknowns as reactions. So this is reaction one, two, three, or four. So R total number of unknown reaction forces are four in this case. Then we count the number of members, which is essentially one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 21 in this case. I hope I'm correct. Yeah. So, yeah, so it is 21. But the question is why are we even considering adding member number of members to the reactions? What is that? Uh, why that is is because we have defined trusses to be axial members. Trust member carries only axial force. Only axial force. So, if there is a member, it can carry only one force. It can be tension or compression. But again, we have a recipe to solve for that. We will consider that to be tension initially. Then if our answer comes out to be negative, we will consider that uh, if the direction needs to be flipped and it will become compression. So essentially tension and compression get combined into one. So each and every member in a truss has one unknown, which is its axial force. That is why if we count the number of members, it is tantamount to calculating the number of unknowns. That is why we add M to R. So R plus M gives me 20. Five. Okay. Now, where did this 2J come from? Let us see. If we consider a truss again, and if I take this point, copy this. Let me take this joint. Now I know that truss is an axial, uh, is an assembly of axial force members. So, if I take one force like that, then one like that, this will be the free body diagram of that joint. I hope you agree on that. Now, what I see is everything, all the forces I can shift to the joint. Using the principle of transmissibility, everything I can shift to the joint. What this implies is it is a concurrent force system. So, in a concurrent force system, we saw that sigma m doesn't help because sigma m gives only it gets satisfied trivially. 0 equal to 0 atai is where they say sigma m does not play any part. So, in k in this case, hamare pas harek joint ko analyze karne ke liye kitne equilibrium equation hai. In general, in a plane, we have sigma fx equal to 0, sigma fy equal to 0, sigma mz equal to 0. These three we have to analyze any structure, any single rigid body in a plane. But because of concurrent force system, this has been rendered useless. This doesn't give me any benefit. In which case, we have only two equilibrium equations per joint. Is it clear? So there are only two equilibrium equations I can apply at each and every joint. And I can apply this as many number of times as there are joints, is it not? So that is why if I have 
n number j number of joints then i have 2j number of equilibrium equations i can apply to find out the unknown forces what are the unknown forces m and r this is why this is 2j in case of a plane i hope uh, that is clear in case of a 3d connection what will happen is it will be concurrent in the 3d space still sigma moment will not give you any benefit only thing is now here we saw only sigma mz trivially getting satisfied in space there will be in space truss three dimensional truss sigma mx sigma my sigma mz all will be trivially satisfied so there we will have only three equilibrium equations per joint which is sigma fx equal to 0 sigma fy equal to 0 and sigma fz equal to z, fz equal to 0 so in such a case in the case of 2 3d how many equi equilibrium equations we will have per joint if there are j joints there will be three equilibrium equations per joint in case of a 3d truss in case of a planar truss we will have only two i hope that is clear to ye jab hota hai ki m plus r jitne hamare paas unknown hai utne hi equations hai to kya ho sakta what happens when we have number of equations equaling number of unknowns we can solve for them uniquely and what have we invoked in throughout this discussion what have we invoked we have invoked only equilibrium equations meaning we have invoked only statics that is why it is called statically determinate if a problem you are able to solve with just these equations then it is statically determinate for example whatever questions we have solved till now we have not come across a situation where we are left with an unknown and don't know how to solve for it and throughout this discussion we have only applied statics so all the problems we have solved till now are statically determinate i hope that is clear and uh, a thing about instability is uh, that it should not that is the equilibrium uh, equation should be satisfied for every conceivable subsystem in a case of neat triangular arrangements there will be no uh, instability from the internal part of the truss why because let us say i have a member like that then i have a member like that and i connect it like this i know that this is a rigid assembly this will not move anywhere if i apply a load so essentially what will happen is this will form a rigid body in a sense now if i add two more members to this these two members if i add this also doesn't move related to this so this becomes a rigid body now i add two more members to this this doesn't move relative to that section we can see that if we have a truss constructed of simple closed triangles then it will behave like a rigid body in the sense that it will not have motion relative to each other so it will have no instability in that sense and externally if i see there are two from the free body diagram we saw there are four reaction components no matter what kind of force i apply be it inclined in any direction these four can take it can nullify its effect and bring the truss back to equilibrium that is why this is stable we can concentrate on more discussions about stability but i don't want to get too deep into it right now we we can perhaps take it up in the next session but i hope that that is clear so here we have 25 unknowns and how many joints do we have 3 12 so j is 12 for this problem the number of joints is 12 so 2j becomes 24 that means that we have 25 unknowns but we have only 24 equations to solve for them which means one unknown gets left out we cannot solve for it uniquely meaning that it is definitely statically indeterminate and we saw the arguments for stability that this becomes a rigid body and with the addition of two more members 
by induction we can see that everything acts as a rigid body without having a degree of freedom related to one another so this is definitely stable in that configuration hence it is statically indeterminate and stable so are there any questions regarding this is it clear okay okay it's clear thanks okay let us look at one more question here the shortest member that needs to be added to the mechanism mechanism is another word for an unstable statically unstable structure so when it serves some purpose we call it a mechanism in the analysis of truss since we don't want any movement we would deem this type of an arrangement to be statically unstable so here m plus r meaning the total number of unknown forces member forces plus the total number of reactions it does not satisfy 2j but it is rather less than 2j which is what this condition is if you see so essentially what we can do is to connect these two if we were to connect these two it becomes this triangle becomes a rigid body it already is this is rigid once we connect this also becomes rigid this becomes rigid with respect to the rest and again so the entire has uh, entire assembly has no movement with respect to one another now this will beg a question why would there be a movement in the first place in this so that is important to understand if i under the action of this load this will move to this point and this can move to this point so we will have something like that happening under the action of that load this truss this assembly not a truss this assembly can actually deform like that if you visualize it so this is actually having some motion this is not statically stable that is why we call this a mechanism or statically unstable this mathematically gets captured when m plus r is less than 2j meaning something is not right about this assembly to keep it in uh, equal with to keep all the subsystems in equilibrium what we can do is we can connect these two in which case it will no longer have that issue you can work it out you can just try to visualize it and see how it will deform i have given you the picture that this is how it will deform under the action of this load if that member is not there if this member is there if this member were there let me color that in some other color if the green member were there we know that it cannot deform we know this assembly cannot deform for sure that much is known so point c cannot move anywhere if this has to come to this point that means green member has to deform but we are dealing with rigid bodies that is why this is not possible so i hope that that is clear that is why addition of the member cf will actually make it a stable truss so we have been asked to report the answer in one specific fashion type the member label in alphabetical order for example if the joints that are connected by the member are a and d type ad so we see that c and f is what we want to connect so we label it as cf so i take it that this is clear are there any questions yeah yes we exactly so we could have added a mem added a member like that also good point so we could have added a member so there there are two possible combinations here which is why we have been asked which is why this adjective is given so you got the idea
yeah any other questions okay so i take it that whatever we have discussed today is clear and i did try to do some justice about shifting from hindi and english uh, so i would request that whenever that be the case as someone had pointed it out you please uh, uh, tell me unmute and tell me that i should explain this in hindi in which case i'll try my best to do that okay so if we brief through what we have discussed today we have seen yeah yes please see recorded section i have already uploaded you can check it out from that swayam page nahi ye to aap pure 2 ghante ka to main hindi mein bana nahi sakta hu ab isiliye main bol raha hu ki jaise aap session attend karte hain to beech mein jaise aapne kisi question pe mere ko tok diya tha ki aap ye hindi mein bhi samjhaiye तो मैंने वो समझाने की कोशिश की थी तो इस हिसाब से तो हम मैनेज कर पाएंगे मगर ऐसा तो नहीं कि मैं पूरे दो घंटे को बैठ के फिर से मैं हिंदी में सॉल्व करना मेरे लिए भी मुश्किल हो जाएगा है ना तो आप जैसे आ, आप आपका मैं पॉइंट मैं समझ रहा हूँ आप जैसे अटेंड करिए और जो आपको क्वेश्चन समझ में नहीं आ रहा है मेरे को टोक दीजिए कि हिंदी में समझा दो मैं समझा दूंगा और वो वीडियो मैं अपलोड भी कर दूंगा है ना एनी फीडबैक ऑन द सेशन एम आई गोइंग टू फास्ट और एक तो फीडबैक मिल गया है कि हिंदी में भी बोले जो मैंने आज भी कोशिश की है और पिछले सेशन में भी कोशिश की थी इसके अलावा कोई चीज है जो मैं ढंग से समझा नहीं रहा हूं या ऐसा कुछ ओके ओके थैंक यू वेरी मच या थैंक यू ओके सो अदर देन दैट आई डोंट हैव मच टू डिस्कस नाउ आई विल सी यू गाइस नेक्स्ट वीक फॉर द डिस्कशन फॉर वीक थ्री विच इज ट्रसेस so we we'll look at it in detail uh, in the meantime if you have any questions please feel free to approach the forum and we'll try to answer your questions so i'll see you guys next week and please do record your feedback if there are any need not be good it can be critical feedback also i welcome it okay so thank you other than that uh, if there are no further questions i'll call it a day thank you guys for attending i'll see you next week